So first off, I just want to say i um, very excited to speak with you again. We chatted for Everything Everywhere um, when you guys were doing the press tour. And I just want to congratulate you on your Thank Oscar. You. I know it's late, but, you know, <laughs> Never too late. just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for American-born Chinese, you are playing an iconic mythological figure. I think myself and many Asians know the name Guan Yin. What was it like um, embodying the character and bringing her into this like modern setting? Because we get to see her, you know, not just in her full regalia. Right, right. Um, it is it is a real privilege, and you know, it's an honor to be able to play her. First of all, because you know she embodies so many all the goodness that we can think of. Right to be to be able to say. I play Guan Yin, then people will think, oh my God, she has kindness, she has love, she has serenity, she has, you know, because that is what Guan Yin does for us. And um, but the fun part, I must say, coming out in her full regalia was easy because Joy Crescent and Jose, who did the costumes, really went out of their way with the head, the headgear and the way the ropes float when as she's coming down and with the wind. Um, but to bring her to the 21st century, that was when we had a little bit more fun. And we, but with great respect to who this iconic goddess is. It was nice to see her like blend in, right, without, and so the hoodie, the baseball cap. So you would look and say, oh, that's a nice auntie, or that's, a, you know, someone who's going shopping and, you know, doing the groceries and things like that. And she would not stick out like a sore thumb in that way. Uh, so I, we really, I really enjoyed that part of it, to give her a sense of playfulness, but not, you know, without uh, overstepping the line. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I loved seeing her at the buffet, which I feel like I was like, oh, this is definitely something my family. <laughs> right. It's like, don't stuff yourself with the rice. I love uh, Calvin and the, you know, our, uh, our uh, writers, they were amazing when they wrote all that into it. And you go like, oh my God, that's really funny because people will, will relate to that. And it's coming from the goddess of mercy. <laughs> that sense of humor is something which, which is, I really enjoyed when it's not too much in your face, but it's there. And the underlying messages that it comes out with, it's very, very important. And what drew you to this project other than, of course, playing a goddess? But uh, the story that it was telling, you know, the story of coming of age for um, finding your self-worth, not just as the, the teenagers, the kids, but also as adults, that you do not become bitter and you think I'm doing this for everybody else except for me. Um, and to understand that, that the journey is hard, um, acceptance. The most important thing is the journey within yourself, the spiritual side. The, the love. If you don't feel love for yourself, how would you expect somebody else to love you if you can't even, you know, first do it for yourself? Um, I think this whole part of the identity, who am I? Who are you? Only you can answer that question. And I think a lot of the times is perhaps we overthink things. You are Chinese. And yes, you are American. And you have such a heritage that you can be proud of. And learn and share with, you know, it's, it's never too late to learn. Um, and I think with the American born Chinese, that's what it is doing is giving you such a fun platform to learn so many things about a different culture, maybe your own culture, um, about the history, about certain mythological characters uh, that are so dynamic, interesting, and um, bringing the two worlds like that together is, is exciting. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I I really enjoy the story of American born Chinese and I really like the fact that this show is seeming seems to be reuniting you, uh reuniting you with your everything everywhere co-stars, but also with like some Shang-Chi people as well. What was it like um reuniting with, you know, like getting to have scenes with like Key and with Stephanie? Obviously you didn't have 
any scenes with James, I don't think. But he was, it was still like, oh, there he is. Like, it was nice seeing him there. Oh, yes. I did have a scene with him because we were all in the heavens. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, you know, being reunited with the people that you've worked with, especially that you have so much love for, is always great. And to come together for such an important story to be told is even better. Right. And we, we all have roles to, to play, to tell this story and, um, reuniting not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera with, uh, Destin and Joy, the Crescents, you know, it was, uh, it was a dream come true. Uh, and also, you know, working for the first time with Daniel Wu, who plays the Monkey King, you know, we've known each other since the days in Hong Kong where we were, fighting and things like that, but we never had a chance to work together. Uh, so this time when he called, he texts me and he says, are you on this American born Chinese? I says, yes. And you better get your <clears throat> in there as quick as possible. So it was a, a really, really tremendous uh, opportunity. And I'm so grateful to, for, to Destin for calling me and Melvin and Kelvin, you know, for making it all come together and together with Disney plus. And this all happened even before the Oscars that they knew that these kind of stories have to be told. And we're one of the first few to come out with the American Blood Chinese. Yeah, I mean, this story was very relatable for me on many levels. I mean, I am also American-born Chinese, um, mm. but I didn't know that you and Daniel had like worked together before, which I think that makes the like the relationship that your two characters have even better on like a you know behind the scenes level at least. Yeah. Um, so you've been in so many franchises lately. You know, we're in Marvel, Star Trek, Witcher. You're going to be in Avatar. You're going to be in Transformers. Do you have a big <laughs> takeaway when it comes to being in these types of projects? Has there been like a lesson in all this? Or is it just like, you know, you'll take the jobs that come to you? No, no, no. I think it's very, I choose the jobs that come to me because it takes me away from my family. So I'm not going to do something that is not meaningful to me. So there's always a reason. Why did I choose to do uh, this franchise or that franchise? Why did I choose to? But it was a choice. It didn't just, you, I'm, you know, fortunately, I think we are all in that, we're in that position where we, the hardest thing is sometimes to say no, especially it, it could be a, a, a filmmaker or a storyteller that you really, really want to work with, but that character just doesn't speak to you or the story is not what you're looking to do. I think that is very important um, that I've, I try to do as best as uh, not to play the same characters again, because then that, that would not be educational for me as an actor it would not be interesting to you as an audience because you see okay that's michelle doing the michelle thing again <laughs> and i hope i'm always going to surprise you or um give you yeah, something to think about so that's why i yeah. take on all these very weird and wonderful and wacky roles <laughs> Well, we love to see you in all of those roles. Every time you appear, I'm very happy to see you. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to speak with me. Oh. And I just, you know, I can't wait for everybody to see this, but I always love seeing you in any of your projects. So oh. I can't wait for all the other things to come in the future. <laughs> thank you.